new sweats. Uh. Working hard, got two jobs, Friday night, but thank you, Lord, there's two checks. There's two checks, two checks. Yeah. Game of spades, bear the flight, I'm talking ten straight books, you got damn right, now who's next? Get off my table. Who's next, who's next? Yeah. Huh? I don't dance a boogie, somebody tell a DJ, put on my song, we grown and we want a two-step. We want a two-step. Um, that's, that's the new flex. That's the new flex. Yeah. Two-step to this, two-step to this, two-step to this, everybody come on. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Dragon Riders Media. This is the Behind the Bullshit Podcast. I'm your host, Dragon Rider. And uh, today, man, hey, so if you don't know, the uh, Behind the Bullshit Podcast is um, basically a platform where I bring on guests. We do a little deep dive in, in uh, how they started in their careers and where they are now and some of the ups and some of the bullshit that they went through along the way. So welcome today to the stage, Miss Wendy O. I love it. I love the intro. It makes me super happy. My face is shiny though. Darn it. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good though. Hey, Don't but, mind hey, me. I'm, I'm going to be I'm... touching on my face. Don't mind me. <laughs> Real women touch their face up live on camera. That's just what we do. Don't come for me. <laughs> oh man. That's awesome. Like, how's your day today? How, you know, how's how's good. things going? It's doing good. How's your day going? I'm just, I'm here just making content, working, looking at charts, um, seeing what I can get myself into. And then I'm probably going to take a little nap. I heard I'm that. doing a makeup touch up because after I'm done with this, I have to do, um, I have to do some more media and then I'm going to take, I'm going to take a nap. Okay. I'm going to take yeah. a nap. <laughs> you are a very, very busy woman. I'll tell you that. So, uh, just let's hop on right into it. So let's, uh, let's get a little background on you. So, so where are you from? I'm born, listen, I am born and bred Los Angeles County. Okay. Um, I am West Coast all the way, all the way. It's so funny because my family's from the East Coast because I have on my mom's side, they're Italian, Brooklyn. Um, so yeah, but I'm born and raised LA County. I go outside. I've been here. Um, but yeah, and then a little bit about my background. Um, I worked, I did a lot of customer service jobs. Um, that's just what I did because I always oh. enjoyed talking to people. Uh, I, my first job I got when I was 14 years old, I was a cashier for a pet store um, under the table. I made like 20 bucks a day, which was enough to pay for those brick Nokia phones and whatnot. Yo, um, <laughs> it's true. I, I, my mom, that. I grew up poor. My mom did not have money. Like the kids these days, they even though they might be poor, they still be getting stuff. I don't I didn't get anything anyways, though. And then I had more customer service jobs. And then I ended up working in healthcare. I worked at the largest HIV AIDS infectious disease nonprofit in the world. And um, I did more customer service there. Um, customer service is important. Yeah. And then um, I heard about Bitcoin crypto like 2011, 2012. I didn't get in because back then, like it was very, very hard to do anything in a crypto. Like crypto wasn't really built out and Bitcoin was definitely not built out. Um, and then 20, end of 2017, I kept hearing, well, prior, like 2016, I kept hearing about a libertarian radio. And I, I'm, I'm pretty much in the middle with things. I don't I don't like to. I, people could do what they want to do just as long as they leave the kids alone. Um, and they don't beat on people unless they have it coming. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so, um, so then I ended up buying Bitcoin end of 2017. I bought Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and um, I got a Twitter account because my family friend was like, "You gotta get on Twitter." I was like, "This is dumb. I don't want to get on Twitter." Anyways, so I got I got on Twitter, and then um, I saw these cartoon characters making a bunch of money, and I had a bit of a STEM background because I worked in healthcare, um, yeah. and I was I was wanted to become a pharmacist at that time, and then um, yeah, and then I just. I started the YouTube channel because I wanted to create a place where I could live stream my in-person events. I've hosted over 14 does for over four dozen free um, crypto meetups, uh, mostly in Los Angeles County, but in Canada, New York, Chicago, a couple other places, Miami, yeah. um, a couple other places as well. So I just wanted to be able to include my global audience, which is very small at the time, um, to those little events that I did to network and learn and on all kinds of stuff. So that's how I, I got here. That's awesome, man. So when you first like when you first started out with the with the social media thing, because like I said, you like I can't I can't scroll a day without seeing a post from Miss Wendy O. I tell you, right yeah, now. I piss people off. I don't care. Hey, but hey, you know what? But hey, that that's when freedom of speech, right? 
Well, that's the thing is like, like I'm getting canceled again today, which is fine. I got canceled. They tried to come for me yesterday, but they're coming for me again today because the killer whales thing that I did, like, they're just like, oh my God, she like, um, she was like a for cashier at like 14. Like, how does she like know anything? Well, that's because it's called life experience dummy. And when you get yeah. life experience, you learn things about things that are not taught to you in school because most yeah. of you, mommy and daddy is paying for everything and you have no life experience. You've never worked a cash register and good for you because you just lost a lot of life experience because you actually meet yeah. a lot of very interesting people in those types of jobs. And that's why I think yeah. that I think part of the problem in America is a lot of people, they never worked a customer service job. They never worked with the general public. They go to college because mommy and daddy takes care of it for them and they have no life experience. So we get these people that they get these like administrative degrees in healthcare or these administrative degrees and in, in public education, but they never actually have boots on the ground. So how the hell are you going to be able to be somebody's boss if you don't have experience in the actual field? But I digress. I digress. Um, but I, <laughs> it's more traffic to me and it's more money I make. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. So when you first started, uh, you know, doing your networking and stuff like that, was it pretty hard for you, uh, you know, as a female to to kind of get in with with, I mean, a, a predominantly uh, uh, male led uh, 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 industry? Because crypto is for a while has been, you know, it's been so like that. crypto has deeper problems than man versus women. Um, yeah. There's a lot of other things that happen that, that yeah. you see get popped up because it's supposed to be a true decentralized economy. Yeah. Um, but really, that this is the thing, like you in crypto crypto is supposed to be decentralized it's supposed to be no borders so if you you have the opportunity to network with people that mm -hmm. like i could go like there's so many different people in my network and i've had the opportunity just because like if you put yourself out you will get opportunities it might not be the same opportunities other people are getting because of certain differences and that's fine that's their business you don't want to do business with people anyways in that aspect if they're yeah. going to judge you that way but at the same time there's other opportunities people could get so yes there's a bunch of men that work in the industry but again my life experience working in customer service and working for a very diverse population that's just like all different types of clients we had. Plus I'm born and raised LA County. Everybody is yeah. mixed with something here. So yeah. you have to learn to deal with a lot of different cultures, a lot of different perspectives because it, it, that's just how it is. So there are challenges, but at the same time, there's a lot of opportunity to do really cool things in my personal opinion. That's awesome. So with, with your networking, like what's the, what's, who's the biggest person? Or I wouldn't say biggest. Cause I mean, everybody puts their pants on the same, but uh, who would, who would you say would be like, one of the most popular people that you've you've ever met you know throughout this this uh adventure so due to crypto i actually met corrupt and that was probably my favorite okay. like that was probably my favorite person to meet i met him and his wife um and like i don't know i thought that was cool like i don't really idolize like famous people or anything like that but yeah. i that was like probably the coolest person i got to meet because of like what i do in the industry and then more importantly because of what i do in the industry i've been able to raise money for different nonprofits in my local community that i've used myself um yeah. so those are those are really cool things but i don't like i don't idolize any of these people i don't idolize people with money i don't idolize anyone because they're a celebrity they're people there's notable people that i will acknowledge that yeah. okay that's super cool you did this but i'm not gonna like fawn over them because at the end of the day, like, I don't really know them. They don't really know me. And I feel yeah. like people should um, uplift figure, figures in their own community that they get direct access to. I, I respect that. I respect that. I, I shook, I actually shook Elon's hand uh, at, nice. at one point because uh, I, I used to work at the Tesla plant uh, a few back in 20, uh, it was 2012, 2013. Uh, I worked at the Tesla plant and I got to, uh, I got to shake his hand. So that was an amazing thing. He's, very, very, very brilliant, brilliant man. And it was just a regular conversation. It wasn't like a star, you know, you know, you yeah. got this aura around you. But yeah, man, I I definitely get that, you know, because at the end of the day, we're we're all, you know, human beings, we're all trying to make it and everything. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, so what what would you say would be uh one of your biggest uh or what was one of your biggest struggles uh when you first got started into uh uh the you know the social media aspect? I uh, see the way that I was brought up, like, again, I'm, on my mom's side, they're Italian, Sicilian Americans, and they're also from Brooklyn. So the culture, that culture is very much like, if you have something to say, you say it to my face. And then plus, like me being born and raised in LA, and like some of the groups and people that I used to run with is very much like, say it, like talk to my face, like the whole yeah. internet culture is weird to me, because like, you have a bunch of people that are anonymous, that are running their mouths that don't know anything about you that don't know some of the struggles you've been through that don't, don't care 
they're just, they're just terrible people. So that was kind of hard. But after I kind of got past that, I'm like, okay, cool. Like you to, you want to play this game? We'll, we'll play this game and it's fine. So now I just kind of ignore people, which is whatever, but that that's probably the hardest part. And like, it, it hurts everybody. Like nobody can yeah. get up here and say, you know, this comment on social media didn't hurt me. Like I like Drake, Drake has got to be hurt right now. Like very, very hurt right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> so but yeah, but that that but then again too, it's like I have an opportunity to make a lot of money and to do to do really cool things. And with that opportunity, people say bad things about you, and it just it is what it is. But other than that, it's life's great because I could just sign off and go drink a bottle of wine if I want to, or go um, you know, go on a hike or go swimming or whatever. Yeah, that's amazing. So, like, what would be one of the um you know, along this way, you know, some sometimes, you know, we all have a little bit of a helping hand, a little bit of guidance. Hey, you know, would there be anybody that you could think of that actually like helped you to to be like uh, to become a little bit more successful? My great aunt. Um, okay. The reason why my great aunt, she was one of the women that worked on Wall Street. Like there is a there's a girl that breaks glass ceilings on Wall Street um, and that was created wasn't created directly for my aunt. But my aunt was on Wall Street, like while they were building um, the Twin Towers, um, she helped open up Chase Bank. Um, back wow. then, women, this is like back, I believe, in the 50s. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't Twin Towers, but it was an I apologize for that. But um, she worked at Chemical Bank for over 25 years. Um, back then, they did not... Um, they did not appreciate women working um, in finance and they didn't appreciate Italian Sicilian people um, working in finance either because they were not um, they were not they were she was an immigrant. So that wasn't something that was like acceptable yeah. back then. But just being able to talk to her and get to know her story. And that that's somebody that's helped me a lot because she taught me to always to always give back, um, always protect the children, always to just be a kind person, but to be firm. And, yes. to set and to set boundaries and not to let anybody bulldoze over you, but to how to play the game. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that, that's total, totally sound advice. Total sound advice, man. Uh, that's awesome. So, you know, um, I always ask my guests, you know, there's, there's a couple moments in your, uh, in your, um, your career that, um, you know, it is, you know, because it's called behind the bullshit. So you, you have a couple bullshit moments, right? So you have a, a, a positive bullshit moment, some, a lot of times where it's like, Hey, you know what, this is kind of some bullshit, but you know, it kind of led me into the right direction and have, you know, helped me out. And then there's other moments where it's like, Oh, you know what, this was some bullshit. And this, I wouldn't wish this on my, my, my worst enemy. So what would be a, a kind of a situation where it was kind of some bullshit that it actually helped you? Um, well, first off, I want I like how you're asking these questions because most people will interview very successful entrepreneurs, and I'm I, I've done okay for myself, but I'm nowhere near the level that I want to be. But I appreciate yeah. that you asked this because a lot of times people will, when they interview people, they just they miss out a lot of the nitty gritty stuff, like the important mm -hmm. stuff that led it there because it's levels. Yeah. So the thing for me that um, that was just a bunch of BS, but ended up helping me was probably all the trolling I got online, people calling me stupid, people calling, saying I'm not educated. People was telling me I had no business in crypto because I didn't come from traditional finance because I didn't have the type of college education they wanted me to have because I didn't mm -hmm. come from a family with wealth and just, and I talk a little bit differently. And part of the reason why I talk a little bit differently is because I do, because I, you know, I, I've lived through a decent amount of trauma and generally people that have experienced the type of trauma that I have, they do have a little bit of brain damage. It's unfortunately, it's just the way that works. So I talk a little bit differently than people. Um, I also grew up differently than other people and, and that's okay. I, yeah. I don't make content for the, the crazy rich people for the tradfi people. I make content for people like me that can relate to my story and that might have experienced things differently. So that actually helped really kind of helped me because it really just reminded me, okay, we still need more voices like mine because all of you entitled a-holes are not making a difference. You guys aren't making a positive difference. Absolutely. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. That is awesome. <laughs> So what would be um so what would be uh the negative where it was like you know what I I I hope I never go through this again type of bullshit. You know what honestly the negative is is like when they dox me it was when people have doxed me on the internet because that like you can hate me all you want. Hate me all you want. But when you dox me I am a parent. I have a 7-year-old daughter. You are putting her in harm's way. When you spread lies about me, you're putting my child in harm's way. So you could hate me all you want. But a lot of the bull, but all that turns up, turns up into bullying. And 
like I'm a I my job is to protect my child. I cannot be protecting my child if you are running your mouth and making lies up about me and posting my my personal information online. Like that's oh, hurting wow. my child. So that that probably right there. Oh yeah, I get that. I, I, I've seen that quite often, especially you know, it's may, I, I haven't seen it anywhere else really, other than a crypto space where people will just track you down because you know, oh, you may have said, oh, I like Sheba at one point, and the next thing you know, they bought the top of Sheba. It went. That's their damn the fault. Bottom. That's their fault for not. That is their fault because we're supposed to be operating in a true decentralized yes. economy. And you know what? If you want to be able to have all these liberties and these freedoms, you have to be able to take accountability for your own actions. You know what? I am stubborn. I am a Leo. I do not like to admit I'm wrong. I don't. I hate it i absolutely hate it but at the same time I, like i have to admit i'm wrong especially to myself because yes. if you're not yes. going to admit you're wrong and you may and you screw up on an investment you're going to keep making that same mistake like where were you like i always think to myself like how sad for you that you're a grown adult you cannot take accountability for your actions like where were your parents your parents did you a disservice i'm always holding my daughter accountable i'm like what did you just do what did you just say? We do lots of 60 second timeouts on her bed or she has to stand in the corner or yeah. some, or something. So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's ridiculous that, that you get a lot of these spoiled people that are like, Oh, well, I lost my bed. You need to give me my money back. No, this is, this is investing, baby. This is <laughs> investing. And this is the way I look at investing. Investing is a 50, 50% chance. You're going to make money. You're going to lose money. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so throughout, you know, throughout your career and stuff, you know, has there ever been a time where, where, you know, some of your family was like, Hey, you know what, you need to stop, you know, you need to get off of there and, and find something else to do. I don't listen to, to, <laughs> I don't listen to non-constructive criticism. <laughs> like, like, unless you can give me an, a reason why I don't, I don't take you seriously. Yeah. Like, unless you can form and this is how I raise my daughter too. She's like, mom, I want to have ice cream. I'm like, cool. Why do you deserve ice cream right now? If she cannot come up with a logical explanation, why do she deserves ice cream at 10 o'clock at night? We're not getting ice cream at 10 o'clock at night. You know, wow. there, ha there has to be a reason. But if she could formulate a good argument, not even an argument, but a good reason why and structure that, baby, you're going to get ice cream at, at 10 p.m. I don't care. But we, 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 I, really, um, I really encourage critical thinking in my household. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what would you say would be your 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 favorite thing about, uh, about crypto? Um, my favorite thing about crypto is, um, that I've done, that I've done okay for myself. Um, that I'm able to be a stay at home mom. I don't have to do the, the three and a half hour round trip commutes, um, four times a week that I can take care of my daughter, um, that I can put her, make sure that she doesn't have to grow up or be subjective to some of the things I had to deal with when I grew up. And I'm also able to give back to my local community um, as far as like the nonprofits that I support and that I've used yeah. myself. So those, those are probably the most important things. And I'm able to give back and to help people um, that do ask me for help. And it, it's a very good feeling because I wasn't able to financially do that before. And I can do that now, but mo most of it is just me being able to be a stay at home mom for my child. Um, yeah. Because when I believe that when people decide to have kids, whether it's planned or not planned, you have to you have you're going to have to live your life and make the best choice to take care of your child, whatever that choice is. That's a personal choice. Um, but yeah. 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 So what would you say would be your biggest uh, uh, country, you know, because you, you mentioned, you know, giving back to the communities and stuff like that. What, what would be one of your biggest contributions to your community? Um, we, we were able to raise, um, I believe it was between 80,000 to a hundred thousand dollars for a local nonprofit. It's a boxing gym called the self-care lab. Um, and what happened was, and the owner, she utilizes therapy, like, or she's, excuse me, Miss Nita, she utilizes boxing as a form of mental health therapy for, for inner city kids, people like myself, yeah. just anybody who wants to, you know, cause let's face it, there's a mental health crisis in America and yes. most people just will hop on medication instead of using physical activity. Um, but that's really important because if I had a facility like hers close to me when I was growing up, I would have definitely made different uh, choices. But during the panorama, I'm a professional boxer. Leo Santa Cruz bought her building that she was renting um, and threw them out on the street and the kids wow. had nowhere to go. So we were able to raise close to about um, 80,000 to a hundred thousand, depending on the market conditions to where we were able to relocate her. We're still, we still need to raise more money because, um, the facility she's in is like, we can't even fit a boxing ring in there, but you know, I'm I, this, the, the goal of this cycle is to get her a gym, um, that she can, you know, that 
will be big enough to house the um the wow. the ring and stuff like that because okay. even the city of because the, the facility was located in city of pomona they didn't do anything at all they knew they it, the whole thing is drama like it's crazy it's like crazy how corrupt the cities are especially in, in southern california but that was probably the coolest thing i was ever able to do and give back um was donate my own money and then get my community to donate money because every single penny that goes to that gym um goes back to the to to the kids and to her organization yeah. So, so how how would if if someone wanted to donate to this to this cause, how would they go about that? You can go to my website, cryptoindio.com, and I've got a little under the blog posting. We have a page for charities, and this I have one for House of Roof, which is a um, also a nonprofit in Los Angeles County that um, survivors can call. So, if you're whether you're a man or a woman, or you're single, whatever it is, if you're a victim of that. Then you they will take you in. They'll help you go to court. They'll house you. Like they'll even take your hamster, your dogs, your kids, whatever it is. Um, so I've got one for them, and then I also have one for Miss Nita. And you can just donate cash on PayPal, I believe. Um, but yeah, then right now they're trying to raise money for their 5K that they have. Okay, fantastic. So you know, just uh, one more. I just wanted to ask, you know, because you you kind of touched on, uh, you know, the mental health thing and stuff like that. Has there ever been a moment in in your career, especially in crypto, man? I, it it, it seems like it happens more often than not that, you know, has there ever been a time that you needed to like just take a step back and take a break from it for a little while? You can't, I, I can't, I, I can't take a step back or a break because um, the way that I deal, I, I've never been able to take a break in my life with different things. I, mm -hmm. I've always been brought up with that mindset. You just work through it. So I haven't been able to, I just work through it. Yeah. <laughs> I got, I got, a, I got a little, got a little mouth to feed that loves, loves apple slices and loves peanut butter. So we got to keep, yes. we got to keep that coming. <laughs> hey, I get that. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, um, you know, I, I know you're a very, very busy woman. I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I really appreciate you coming on and, and just giving a little bit of a in-depth on, on, on your background and stuff like that. Uh, for anyone that, you know, uh, the link to her, uh, her, her, her socials and stuff like that is posted in the description of the, uh, of the videos and everything. And it will be posted on audio and SoundCloud and everything like that. So, uh, yeah, if, and donate to a good cause, don't be cheap. Yeah. Get, I don't, I don't touch any of the money. Out. Yeah. I don't touch any of <laughs> the money goes straight to Miss Nita and it goes straight back into the organization. And y'all want to come by and see the organization and see how these poor kids are, how the conditions are having to train in because we just, it's been so impossible to work with the, the city officials. Like they, they're giving money to all these other nonprofits. It's just, it's, I could go, I can do like a whole yeah. podcast episode about it, but all the money goes to her. It's going back to the community and it is a lot, it is a licensed nonprofit. So you do get a tax write off. Yeah. So Again, thank you for having me and giving yeah. me a platform to talk about my favorite nonprofit and to talk a little bit about myself. <laughs> yeah, yes, ma'am. Anytime, anytime we'll do this. So like, like I say, once again, if you ain't already following Miss Wendy, hey, make sure you go shoot her a follow on all her socials and stuff like that. Like I said, don't be cheap. Go donate some money for a good cause. This is, this is what crypto is about, especially if you're in crypto. You, hey, you need to hey, send out some, get some at BNB out, get some at ETH out. And like I say, Donate to a good cause. It's a great thing going on, and it's going towards to help some kids. So, because it's the fine. thing, if you if you <laughs> if you help our kids out, when you get old and decrepit and you're expired, they're gonna treat you with decency. Because we're trying to teach these kids decency <laughs> on how to treat other people. So if you come out your pocket, they are going to see that, and they're gonna want to give back. <laughs> That's my opinion. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. All right, absolutely. Thank you very much. And uh, like I say, we uh join me Thursday for the next uh beyond uh excuse me, beyond the bullshit podcast. I'll see you later. Bye. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answer to no man, I still go, 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 go. a lot of still every single day i'll be making moves till i'm buried in my grave to the system i don't want to be a slave i've been doing Out of me. You better watch out if you ignite me to road ahead of full prophecy to be the greatest beast the world has ever seen. I feed him every day.